Want to know how I saw Voyagers? Well, I took a voyage to the movie theater. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about a brand new theatrical release, Voyagers. Let me know before we begin what your thoughts on this movie were if you already saw it or if you were planning on seeing it. And make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these reviews as it helps me out immensely by getting my channel out there. And if you're new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with reviews of new releases, older films, hidden gems, and so much more on a near daily basis. But let's jump right into it and let's talk about Voyagers. Set in the near future, this film chronicles the odyssey of 30 young men and women who are sent deep into space on a multi-generational mission in search of a new home. The mission descends into madness as the crew reverts to its most primal state, not knowing if the real threat they face is what's outside the ship or who they're becoming inside it. This is written and directed by Neil Berger, who also directed Limitless, The Illusionist, and most recently, The Upside. And this finds him well within his comfort zone, as, while I haven't seen every single one of his movies, I found that his genre efforts are usually where he's best. Now, that being said, I'll be honest. When I first saw the trailer for this, it didn't immediately grab me. I was intrigued enough to still want to see the movie, but... I wasn't the biggest fan of some of the cast members, and there still just wasn't enough in the trailer that I felt hooked me in. And my expectations were a bit lowered as I started seeing the really negative reviews, as well as the comparison Lord of the Flies in Space. Not that I dislike Lord of the Flies, but it's not a story that I loved. So while I try to be positive going into movies, I wasn't expecting much going into this. And maybe it's because of those lowered expectations, but I gotta say, I actually had a good time with this. I was very pleasantly surprised by this one. It's by no means one of the best things I've recently seen or anything like that, but for the way this got picked apart, I think it deserves a little more credit. So, I think the big thing that rubbed most people the wrong way was the fact that it didn't fully live up to its potential. And that is a 100% valid criticism, as I do agree with that. This only runs at 108 minutes, but it had the chance to be a grand, sweeping sci-fi epic. With the setup being in the future, and the fact that this journey would take three generations worth of people to actually make it to the new planet, we could have had this two and a half hour or so story where we actually saw all three generations on this journey. And then the film could have really hit home its themes about the meaning and value of one's life, which it does touch upon here, but not as much as it could have. For context, the way these young adults are prepared for this mission is that they're isolated almost as soon as they're born, and then they're exclusively trained to be able to operate in space so that they don't miss the outdoors once they actually undergo the mission. And the way to keep them focused is that they're given this blue drink with each of their meals, and it suppresses a lot of their desires and instincts. But when they realize what they've been robbed of, and they start to really think about the fact that their entire life is meant to be spent on a mission they're not even going to see completed, they do begin to ponder the value of their own lives against the value of this mission. However, the more philosophical elements of this film wind up not being the primary focus, as it soon shifts gears into more of this action thriller set in space, as this crew winds up being devoted divided into two conflicting groups. And when you think of what we could have gotten against the direction this film ultimately takes, then yeah, it does feel like a bit of a letdown. But despite not living up to its full potential, I still think what we got was solid. I think a film can not live up to expectations and still be enjoyable, and that's how I felt about this. For one thing, I absolutely love this film's overall visual aesthetic. Berger still found a way to do something unique with a film that was mostly confined to one setting. Most notably, whenever he visualized the characters experiencing more extreme emotions for the first time, like pleasure or pain, we get these rapid-fire cutaways of various images to help contextualize what it's like for them, and it reminded me of something out of Limitless with how the drug Bradley Cooper used would take its effects on him. And from a storytelling perspective, while it didn't go in the direction I hoped it would, it's still engaging. The characterization is a little simplistic, but something to keep in mind too is the fact that we're following characters around who mostly never experienced anything beyond being trained for this mission. So throughout the film, they're all trying to figure themselves out. And while it's not as deep as I would have liked to have seen, in this context, it still works for what it is. The main three we follow are Ty Sheridan as Christopher, Lily Rose Depp as Sayla, and Finn Whitehead as Zack. The former two act as our protagonist, while the latter is our antagonist, with the crew being divided between the two factions led by them. 
And while the way characters lean into one side or the other will be somewhat over the top in some regards, like the villainous characters will sometimes be cartoonishly villainous, it still works overall. A lot of the conflict originates upon our main characters learning that the blue is keeping them subdued, and they both have very opposing reactions to how to handle the situation. You have Christopher, who's pissed about it, but... After having to get over it a little, he still wants to focus on the mission, just without the feel of being controlled. Meanwhile, Zack feels so betrayed that he feels no one has the right to tell him what to do anymore ever again, since their entire lives have been strictly controlled up until this point. And another thing to keep in mind too is part of this does have to do with the fact that it's also these characters' inherent nature possibly being brought out. As it's implied, this is probably how they would have acted all along, and not just as a reaction to finding out they were being controlled. But it's still a pretty solid conflict that rarely comes off as too hammy in the way it's presented to us. And it makes for really engaging, solid conflict. As the ship becomes more divided, I found myself more and more invested in the tension that grew among everyone. And what helped too, were some solid performances. Now, admittedly, I'm not the biggest fan of Ty Sheridan in general, mainly as his X-Men performances always stood out the most to me, and the movies from that franchise that he was in weren't the greatest. But he holds his own here pretty well, I gotta say. And Finn Whitehead's also good here. This is the second time this year where he plays a pretty grating antagonist, the other being Don't Tell a Soul. And I felt there were a lot of similarities between the two characters, though here, he's someone you're meant to enjoy hating, as he plays into some of the other crew members' fears and tries to channel their anger. And I think the film succeeded in making me loving to hate him, and that's especially thanks to a solid performance by Whitehead. Though I think of the main three, Lily Rose Depp gave the best performances. Ironically, I don't think her character was was as well written as some of the others to be honest, because while she's clearly the protagonist, she tries to play more as this neutral force at first. She wants to focus on the mission and she tries to act more as this mediator between Ty Sheridan and Finn Whitehead, telling both of them to knock off their arguing. And I think they could have done a little more with her character, but her performance really elevated her material. As for the supporting cast, most of them aren't as fleshed out, though there are some familiar and up and coming faces who do pop up, including Blinded by the Lights Vivek Kelly. Quintessa Swindell, who we'll later see in Black Adam next year, Bran Stark himself, Isaac Hempstead Wright, and in my absolute favorite performance in the entire movie, Shante Adams as one of the crew members who sides with Sheridan, in what really was kind of a thankless role, as a lot of her dialogue is just about staying focused and trying to appeal to people's humanity, and in a sense it does come off as a little one note, but she gives such a knockout performance that she makes her character one of the most empathetic people in the entire movie. Plus, you do have Colin Farrell here in a supporting role as the ship's commander, who initially wasn't part of the plan, as the crew was meant to go alone. But he feels he doesn't have much going on for him on Earth, and he wants to help everyone stay on track, while acting as a caring protector. And he does a pretty good job here, I gotta say. Since he's the only person on the ship who has some connection to the outside world, he brings all of his personal belongings with him, which includes recordings of his time with his own family. And the characters wouldn't get little snippets of what that life was like, either through through what little he tells one of them, or later on when they even get some glimpses of the recordings. And I thought this was some brilliant storytelling as it gave him some really strong characterization while also further advancing the arcs for our main characters. As I said earlier, the film gradually builds from a somewhat more methodical experience in the first act to more of an action thriller in the third act as tensions really come to a head among all the crew. And while I was disappointed that this part of the film pushes aside some of the initial themes and world building, I found this part of the movie to be thoroughly enjoyable. There was a great sense of tension built up amongst everyone, especially with this sense of claustrophobia as everyone was confined to this one location. This led to characters having to find inventive ways to outwit each other, as many of the spaces within the ship were pretty tight. And because of this, while it is disappointing we didn't get the film we should have got, I still found myself very entertained. To be clear, Voyagers is a film that had potential for so much more, and wound up squandering said potential. What should have been an epic sci-fi journey focusing on three generations winds up being more of a close quarters thriller focused on one very tiny part of an 86 year long journey that simply played like Lord of the Flies. That being said, I still think what we got was very commendable. The film is a visual delight with some really gorgeous shots, and it does play nicely into its themes of the value of one's life, even if it could have leaned into those elements a lot more. 
Plus, while this does go against some of the film's initial intentions, I think it does build up pretty nicely from a methodical sci-fi drama to an engaging and exciting action thriller, with the shift not coming off as jarring. And we feel invested in that journey because of all the solid performances. Again, it's nowhere near as strong as it could have been, but I really think it's worth watching. Voyagers gets a 7.5 out of 10. I was honestly surprised by how much I enjoy this, and I say this as someone who had somewhat low expectations for it going in. Like, this wasn't one of my most anticipated movies of the month or anything. I get where a lot of the criticism comes from, as it partially has to do with that wasted potential, but if you judge it strictly based on what we got, it is a legitimately good movie in my personal opinion. I think this is going to go down as one of the films this year with the most unfair bad raps. Again, there should have been much more to it, but despite not taking full advantage of its premise, I thought it was still enjoyable. So let me know, did you see Voyagers or are you planning to see it and what were your thoughts? Did you actually like this one? Is there a movie that you like that critics don't? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. And for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone and keep having fun with film.